Why does God not answer my prayers, even when I have been praying for a while and I feel abandoned by him? Mm. Yeah, Abigail, thank you so much for um for us for putting that out there because I think we've all been there at different times. Um I understand that full well. You know, when I went into the doctors and uh, there wasn't a heartbeat, um I didn't give up. I spent two weeks praying that Jesus would would give life to our child because I knew that he's the God of miracles. I've seen him do miracles actually with my own eyes. So why couldn't he do a miracle in this instant? You know, I didn't want to um, want to rule that out. And I think sometimes we do the opposite thing that we we give up on praying and, and we think prayer doesn't make a difference because God's just going to do whatever he wants to do anyway. That's not the way the Bible talks about prayer. The Bible actually says um, that you don't have because you don't ask and that if, if you ask anything in my name, then I will give it to you. And I think when we don't bring our prayers to God, we're basically playing God because we're deciding for him what he does and doesn't want to do. We don't get to make those decisions. God does. I believe in the power of prayer. And yet that makes it even harder in the times when the prayer doesn't get answered. And um, because because I believe that he can, you know, why why that miracle and not this one? You know, why why did that person's child get to live and, and mine didn't? You know, I, I don't get the answers to those questions. And it can be easy to feel abandoned in those moments. Now, I know that I'm not abandoned because like I shared earlier, I I, if nothing else, I can stand on the historical fact that Jesus Christ came, he lived, he died on a cross and he rose from the dead for me. And, and that is an event that changes everything in history. And, and I may not always get the answers to my questions as to why this prayer and not that one. God, why did you show up there, but you didn't show up here? And, and I remember a time when you used to answer, it felt like you answered my prayers all the time, but now it's been like five years of barrenness and I pray and you're not there. And, and you know, the, the Christian walk is like that. There are times when God feels so close and there are times when he feels really far away. And so Sometimes that's on us because there are there are reasons that we put him at a distance, um, and other times it, it genuinely seems to be that God is 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 allowing us to be in this space, not where He's gone anywhere. The Holy Spirit never leaves us; God is always with us. But but he, it's almost like he he leaves us in this place of tension where we have to wrestle it out. And as as, as part of the walk of faith, is saying, you know, how much do you really want me? <laughs> you know, how, how much are you in this for the stuff you get from me, or for, for life because life is comfortable? And how much are you just after my own heart? You know, anyone can um, sing songs and worship God when it feels good, and you get a great high from it in in the church service, and it's like, yeah, this is so fun but true worship is when you don't feel like it and it's really hard and you go to him anyway because he's worth it because he is good because even though you're not seeing the evidence of it in your life you know that you know that you know that Jesus Christ conquered the grave that he died on the cross for you and therefore even when evidence doesn't look like it around you you know that there is a God who is for you now sometimes being for you doesn't always mean you get what you want I am so for my one-year-old son I give him a lot of things, <laughs> um, but there are certain things sometimes he wants um, that he doesn't know are going to be bad for him that that actually I, I have to say no to or I have to defer on and say not yet. Um, and, and he thinks it's because I'm harming him. Actually, it's because I have something better intended for him. I have his best in mind. And it's really hard when we don't have God's perspective when it comes to prayer. And because sometimes he sees things, actually, most of the time he sees things <laughs> that we we don't see, that we can't see. We're not in a position to see. There are certain prayers in my life I fervently prayed for a really long time. And I was mad at God that he didn't answer them. And then years later, I look back and I'm like, God, I'm so glad that you didn't answer my prayer. I never thought I would say those words. I thought you betrayed me so badly at the time, but actually you knew what you were doing. And even if it took a while, now I see the trajectory of what you're weaving together. And, and God is is holding all the threads of this master tapestry of life. And, and we only see the smallest fraction of it, but he sees the whole. He has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. Sometimes that's going to conflict with what you think the plan and the purpose should be. And that's really hard, but he hasn't gone anywhere. He's still got you. He will never leave you or forsake you. He won't let you go. And so um, sometimes that's, that's about saying, God, this is what I really want from you. This is what I'm asking for. I'm asking in your name. But if for some reason this goes against what you desire for me, because there is a better plan, then as Jesus himself prayed, um, not my will, but your will be done. And that can be the hardest prayer in the world to pray. Um, but it's also often the most powerful prayer as well. I remember when 
our friend Nabil Qureshi was dying of cancer a few years ago. And Vince and I were really praying as soon as we heard the news that God would save him from cancer. We didn't want him to die. He was only 33, had a daughter, and we just couldn't fathom that this could be a good thing. So we were crying out to the Lord and asking him, Jesus, would you save him? Um, but, you know, in that moment, we just had a sense of uh, both of us, of, of, of the Holy Spirit, maybe saying, saying to, back to us, you know, I already have. I already have saved him. And sometimes we need that eternal perspective as well, that we wanted, we wanted to be healed in the now so he could go on for another few decades. But then he would still have to die. But God had already done the work. He brought Nabil from death to life. He had saved him. And ultimately, that's where our hope is grounded, even as we ask. And sometimes our prayers are answered immediately. Other times they're postponed. Other times God has something better in store. But keep asking and keep pressing in and, and don't run from him because you're disappointed. Keep going to God and ask him to show you what he's doing, to, to show you the path he's weaving and walk it out with him. And it may take some time, but I think you'll see that if you stick with him, he he, he is the friend who's closer than a brother. He, he will be true to you all the days of your life. He will be faithful and you will find him to be faithful. Um, but sometimes we need that little bit of perspective and that time.